Rebar. Rebar. Hello and welcome to DACA Games. Ah, my uh, Australian accent sucks. Well, I can barely speak English, so um, whatever. A while back, while watching a video from um, a hardware unbox, it was this same video, the 12 GB GeForce RTX 3080 review, where the host clearly said that uh, while testing GPUs, resizable bar was disabled because it favors AMD GPUs and it was, uh, I'm quoting, a CPU feature. I had to take note of what he said because, well, it was just hilarious. He said that uh, while testing the uh, RX 6800 XT, it gets, uh, for example, 20% boost in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And uh, while in the same testing system, while testing the RTX 3080, well, it gets only 5 to 10%. So uh, we already can see a problem here, but uh, sure, well, now, of course, I didn't like that. Uh, I didn't like that not one bit, because um, it's wrong. It just is. And the nice folks at um, Hardware Unbox decided to insult me, because uh, that's what you do. You um, insult people, and then, as a true gentleman, you will uh, delete the um, opposing opinion. That's what you do when you have a um, somewhat big YouTube channel, you just uh, silence the uh, other opinion, because why not? One would expect from a channel like this some, uh, I don't know, some, uh, some courtesy, some, uh, I don't know, education while communicating with people. Uh, some would call it professionalism, but uh, who am I to talk about that? Not only that, they've done quite a few uh, different explanations on uh, why they don't use resizable bar while testing GPUs, like uh, the aforementioned CPU feature, because um, apparently it is a CPU feature, but, for example, XMP is a motherboard feature, which is weird, but uh, sure, it is one of those explanations. Other is that uh, resizable bar is very hard to find and to uh, activate in your BIOS, so um, there's that also. And uh, most gamers don't even know what it is. And uh, again, quoting them, they are uh, uneducated. So uh, I guess we are stupid because, uh, well, we don't know what it is. We don't know where to find it. And uh, we don't know how to activate it. And again, it is a CPU feature. So today we are going to do something different. I'm not the one to um, make this kind of content, but uh, whatever. Today we are going to talk the uh, base address register in PCIe or resizable bar or SAM smart access memory. Different names for the same thing because, uh, because of marketing and that's, that's how it works. And to start things we need to make uh, three points very very clear. The first one is that uh, resizable bar isn't new. We hear about it since, I don't know, a couple of years, three years from now, but uh, well it's been around since uh, 2010, uh, more or less, I believe. Linux users know this because, well, they use it. It's a software thing where you just uh, register a different address to access the VRAM on your GPU. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, it isn't new. It's around since 2010 with PCIe 3.0. So uh, point number one is that. Number two, this isn't a technology by um, AMD or NVIDIA, because it isn't. It's not magic, also. It's a, um, let's say, open standard introduced by the PCI SIG in PCIe 3.0. The PCIe SIG are the very nice people responsible to, or for, specifying the peripheral component interconnect, therefore the name PCI, and uh, PCI-X and PCI-Express on uh, computer buses, so um, there's that also. Number three, this isn't a CPU feature like they say. Well, because it isn't. It is a system feature, which in uh, most cases, and when well implemented, should result in a um, higher frames per second in terms of gaming, of course. So uh, we could call it a GPU feature, but we are not. Because, uh, because it isn't, 
It's a system feature with an impact on gaming performance. What is resizable bar then? Let's go to the drawing board. We have some um, error appropriate hardware. Kind of, I guess, but um, sure. Different components on your system have to communicate with each other. You know your CPU, your RAM, GPU, storage, everything. And uh, in the case of rebar, we are going to address the um, CPU, the GPU, and the RAM. Under the PCIe physical bus, you can see this in your motherboard with the uh, PCIe traces either going directly to the CPU or to your uh, chipset. A um, tunnel, a tunnel is created allowing the processor to directly access the VRAM on the GPU. Now, while gaming, your GPU doesn't do everything, of course. There are certain tasks which need to be handled by the CPU, like shaders and textures and um, other stuff. The way this works is that those tasks performed by the processor were loaded to the VRAM on your GPU in chunks of up to 256 megabytes. And then the rest was then stored by the CPU on your system's memory or your RAM. Let's do a practical scenario. Let's say we are playing a game that needs, I don't know, 400 megabytes of RAM. This is a 768 megabyte card. So uh, your CPU is going to tell the GPU, hey, I need 400 megabytes of your RAM to store some stuff in there. And well, the card says that's cool. I am a 768 megabyte card, so I have those 400 available, but uh, there's a catch. Through my uh, door, you can only fit 256 megabytes at each time. So uh, the CPU tells the GPU, sure, I'm gonna send you those 256 megabytes that can fit through your door. And well, I'm gonna store the rest, the 144 megabytes on the system memory on my RAM and you let me know when you need it. This meaning that when the GPU is ready to receive the other information performed by the CPU, which is now stored in the system memory, it needs to tell that to the CPU. The CPU then goes to the RAM and reaches for that info, goes back to the CPU and then sends it to the GPU. All of this takes time, of course, it's an ongoing cycle between the three components, which is imposed by that um, 256 megabyte limitation. Not only that, it means more work to the um, VRAM manager. When the CPU tells that, well, it needs 400 megabytes, but it can only fit 256 at a time, the VRAM manager is going to create a virtual address for those 256, receive those 256, and then when it's ready for the other 144, it's going to create a second virtual address, then the CPU reaches for that info and sends it to that address, meaning more work is done on the GPU also. Now a thinking mind would ask, well, if we have GPUs with dozens of um, gigabytes of VRAM available nowadays, what is the point with that 256 megabyte limitation? Well, well thought. Remember, we are talking, like I said earlier, the end of the 2000s. So uh, we had stuff like the um, GeForce 8800 series, the um, AMD 4800 series also. So we are talking 512 megabyte cards, 768 in this case, one gigabyte cards a little bit later. So doing a couple of transfers to fill those 512 megabytes, for example, wasn't a real issue. But with cards and uh, its respective VRAM numbers going up, well, now this 256 megabyte limitation is a problem. Back in 2010, PCIe 3.0 was released to the public after several delays, but uh, sure, bringing with it the resizable bar technology integrated 
which was set to deal with the uh, aforementioned issue. While using resizable bar, all the tasks performed by the processor, which were stored in RAM, are now stored in the GPU's VRAM, until it's full of course, leaving the system memory to deal with other stuff. Now the CPU loads data, like textures, shaders and other assets, directly to the VRAM and tells the GPU where that data is, meaning that the GPU has access at all time when it needs it. This means less back and forth transfers between the CPU, GPU and, uh, well, the RAM also, and uh, the ability of uh, much bigger information being transferred. A little more technical, the CPU tells the GPU VRAM manager the amount of VRAM that needs to load a certain amount of data, and the VRAM manager then allocates that amount to that task, creating a virtual address of the CPU directly in range, with the memory being accessible as needed. Not meaning that the um, RAM on your GPU is full, but rather assigned to it. When you see VRAM usage on your GPU, it mostly means VRAM allocated. The CPU then is ready to start standing all those switches ones and zeros, which turn into uh, what you see on your computer monitor. So with all that said and done, what the heck does this mean to us, to the end user, to those who play some video games on our PCs? Well, less trips between the CPU and the GPU should, in theory, translate in a uh, performance increase and of course with uh, the better implementation the better the uh, results. That's why if you pair a um, AMD 5000 CPU with a AMD 6000 GPU you can hope, emphasis on hope, for better results because um, those components were made with resizable bar in mind. And just because Intel or Nvidia or whatever brand we are talking about doesn't implement that technology at all or not so well, that doesn't mean you should cripple a technology that is there and get some results that are not true because, well, they are not. Like he says in the video, if you pair a 6800 XT with an RTX 3080, well, the 6800 XT will get a boost of 20% in performance, so uh, you better not activate it because, well, we want those uh, free NVIDIA cards rolling in the mail. So to summarize things up, CPUs and GPUs had a limitation of 256 megabytes per trip, forcing the CPU to store data in the system memory or your RAM, then fetching it when the GPU needed. With the implementation of PCIe 3.0, resizable bar was born, making all the VRAM on your GPU accessible to the CPU, breaking that 256 megabyte bottleneck, resulting in less transfers between both, which, again, when well implemented, should result in a uh, overall better performance. So for those who um, didn't get the idea, it is not, again, uh, Australian accent, a CPU feature, it's not an AMD or NVIDIA technology, and it is accessible to every manufacturer. It's a uh, PCIe feature since PCIe 3.0, and uh, if well implemented, you should always use it regardless of AMD's implementation being better than uh, NVIDIA's or Intel, not using it because uh, it favors AMD cards is just, uh, well, plain stupid. It's just from uh, uneducated people who don't know what a resizable bar is. Before wrapping up this video, let me tell you that, uh, well, you don't need to come to the comments saying that I'm making fun of um, Australians because I'm not a... Uh, Big shout out to uh, Phil's Computer Lab from Australia. That's a proper channel that you should definitely check it out. As for uh, hardware unboxed, well, uh, you should grow a pair and uh, you should uh, man up to NVIDIA. That's what you should do. 
So, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. It was a very different video. Some uh, technicality stuff, but uh, whatever. Subscribe to the channel, because your support is always and uh, very much appreciated. Check out the other videos that I have here on the channel. I have a tiny video on how to enable a resizable bar, because it's very difficult. Uh, check it out. And uh, as always, again, thank you for watching. Until my next video, please do take care.